the book of Jeremiah. It's a little bit difficult to find. Book of Jeremiah. If you'll split your Bible down the middle, you should be near Psalms, and then you'll need to take a right. As it goes on, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Psalms, Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah. So we'll find Jeremiah, the sixth chapter. Jeremiah, chapter six. God bless you for being faithful to church this morning. Hope to see all of you back tonight at the evening service at 6 o'clock. I've said from time to time, if you don't like the preacher's preaching, then all of you show back up tonight and I'll have a heart attack and you'll have to get another preacher. <laughs> but the truth is, it looked like Wednesday night we had more than we had the previous Sunday morning. Right. I survived it. We had a good time. May the Lord bless His Word this morning. Would you take your Bibles there now and stand as we look at Jeremiah chapter 6. You have Jeremiah chapter 6. We'll begin reading. We'll begin reading in verse 9. And the Bible says there, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall truly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine. Turn back thine hand as a grape gatherer into the baskets. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the aged with him that is full of days. And their houses shall be turned unto others with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, every one is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. They have healed also the heart, the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Mm. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Now those of you who read your Bibles through know that you'll find a lot of this negative tone in the books of the prophets of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Whether it be the minor prophets or the major prophets, you'll find this negative tone. So much of it is against the wrongdoing of God's people. But you know what? That looks kind of familiar. To me, there's a lot of people in the day in which we live that name the name of the Lord and they've got hard hearts, don't really want to have much to do with the Bible. But in contrast to this and in solution of this, we find verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Amen. Where is the good way? And walk therein. And ye shall find rest for your souls. Amen. But they said, We will not walk therein. Amen. Also I sent watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Therefore hear ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words nor to my law, but rejected it. I'd like to pause there and take verse 16 as our text. Thus saith the Lord. By the way, this may be a negative uh, passage, but I pray to God that we might get a good positive result Amen. as we look at verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. Amen. But they said, We will not walk 
therein. May we pray. Now, Heavenly Father, I pray that as for this preacher and for every receptive heart, I pray that we would respond rightly to the admonition from the Word of God that we might have rest for our souls. May no one leave this place rejecting the Word of the Lord. For it's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. 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 Be seated. <coughs> in some of our literature, by the way, thank the Lord, we got a Another box of tracts came in this past week. Now I just need some of you to go pass them out. Amen. 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 I keep them with me, and uh, I'd like you to join me in passing these tracts out. We've got a couple thousand more beautiful tracts, and uh, <coughs> they just arrived this week. But some of our literature, maybe in this one, yeah, we advertise our church as the way church used to be and ought to be. And I want to take the verse that we read as our text and use that verse to talk to you about the truth of the verse and our little saying, some this morning. Churches are in trouble. Our nation is in trouble and our churches are in trouble um, to a lesser degree because if we to a lesser degree, have practiced some of the same principles that are sending our nation in a bad direction. In an effort to keep up with the times, many of our churches are going down the tubes. They're conforming to the world in disobedience to what the Bible says in Romans 12, 2, where it says, Be not conformed to this world. And too many churches are not being changed by the Word of God. As Jesus prayed in John 17, 17, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy Word is truth. Amen. Every time that you and I come together here at this church, we are to leave here changed. Amen. Every time that we assemble for the preaching of the Word of God, we are to leave here a little bit cleaner. Amen. We are to leave here a little bit stronger. Well, to leave here, God save people a little bit holier. Churches are in trouble, and I'm afraid that many of us can be described by the majority of the passage that we've read this morning. I want to title the message from three words that are found in the middle of verse 16. The, me the message this morning is just simply the old paths. The old paths. Path. Thus saith the Lord, stand in the waves and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. I'm, a, I'm aware that not everyone who misses a church service misses because of their sorry Christian. We have people who miss because of different things. And among those being sicknesses and frailties of the human body. And among those people, I think this morning of Brother Jim Moyers, who was kind enough to send me a text saying that it didn't look like he was going to make it for Sunday school, but he was going to do his best if he could fill up to it to be here for preaching service. And he didn't make it. And I'm not mentioning him this morning to try to make you feel bad toward Brother Jim. He comes to mind because when he moved here from Mississippi, he moved here and moved his membership from a church over there. I think it was in Meridian. I can't remember. That's right. But the name of the church was Old Paths Baptist Church. And so I thought about him as I uh, prepared this message for you folks. By way of introduction, let me say that the old paths were cleared one day by old warriors. Mm -hmm. John the Baptist was a path clearer. I don't know if you remember, but he introduced himself as a voice crying in the wilderness, make straight a path, make straight a highway. He was a, a bulldozer Baptist if there ever was one. John, in our country, the old paths of fundamentalism were cleared by the likes of men like J. Frank Norris, John R. Rice, J. 
Jack Hyles, Lee Robertson, right. Harold Seifer, Peter Ruckman, Lester Rolloff, Bobby Robertson, who just passed away, mm -hmm. and others. The old paths were cleared by men of God who stood for a long time Amen. with a broad axe. Mm -hmm. And many of them just stayed in one place mm -hmm. for 10, 20, 30, 40. Brother Bobby Robertson was at his church. When he died, he had pastored that church for <coughs> over 60 years. Mm -hmm. Amen. And they just continued to swing the broad axe of the Word of God, clearing away uh, through the wilderness. I say the old paths were cleared by warriors. The old paths are consistent with the Word of God. The Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In Psalm 119, 105. You mark her down. The old paths are contrary. Don't get your hopes up. These aren't the points of the message. Okay, if you think I'm about to get to verse 4 and say, I'll every head bowed, every eye closed. Yeah, we're not even close. But the third thing about the old paths by way of introduction is they were contrary to the world. And the Christian who lives for God is going to find his thinking and his behavior many times going in direct contrast to what this world is doing and what this world is saying. Some of you have lived long enough to where you have been shocked by what has taken place in your lifetime and has become known as acceptable behavior. As a matter of fact, we're getting to the point to where... The world is declaring good to be evil and evil to be good. And if you don't agree with them, they're going to punish you. It could happen in my lifetime that I eventually get arrested in the pulpit or because of something that I say in the pulpit simply because that I preach the truth. That may not be something like... Uh, me saying, well, you know, I'm going to tell you the truth. Easter's coming up next week. I hope we have a great Easter Sunday. Amen. Okay? Amen. I understand Easter was observed uh, as a pagan festival before Christians ever used it to observe the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm going to preach the truth anyway. Number one, I'm going to tell you the truth that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Amen. I serve a risen Savior. Amen. The second part of that truth I'm going to preach to you about at Easter is, I'm just going to mention it, and that is, oh no, and I don't know if these folks can handle this truth or not. <laughs> that is, I'm sorry for the greens, but there just ain't no Easter bunny. <laughs> He's not real. Oh, now I know something about eggs, and eggs that I eat come from chickens. Yeah. Amen. Rabbits have rabbits. That's right. Chickens have eggs, and I eat their eggs. I know. I had eggs this morning. <laughs> but it may be something more serious than that, where the preacher stands behind the pulpit and he declares that men mating with men is an abomination to God. That's right. And it yeah. could happen in our lifetime that preachers <laughs> who have the courage to do that are going to be arrested. Mm -hmm. right as preaching hate speech. It doesn't matter that we love those people and want them to be saved. It doesn't matter that we're willing to put our arms around one of these perverts and tell them that Jesus died for them Amen. and Jesus wants them to go to heaven and to trust His shed blood. It doesn't matter that just the fact that we declare that the Bible says what they're doing is wrong may become enough to get us thrown in jail someday. But the old paths are contrary to the world. But don't you worry, dear beloved, so is the Lord in, in the things that He says. And forth the old paths of the Christian way. The Bible says in Psalm 27, 11, Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Let me give you some thoughts this morning to try to encourage us as a church. In an ungodly age. In an age when the majority of people are rejecting the truth of the Word of God. In an age where many Christian people are rejecting the truth of the Word of God. In an age where many Christian people in America are conforming to the world. And thinking the way the world thinks. I want to encourage you.
to ask for the old paths. Amen. I just want to list some for you this morning. Maybe at another time we'll have the time to delve into them in some detail. But let me say, number one, let's as a church ask for the old paths methods. Let's ask for the methods of the old paths. It is not right to do the right thing in the wrong way. I'll give you an illustration of this. I've got the verses in front of me. But you may remember that there came a time where God's hand of blessing was lifted off of the nation of Israel and His hand of chastisement and punishment was put upon them. And the reason was is they had deviated in their method of what God told them to do. God told them a particular way for the Word of God to be handled and to be transported. Any of y'all follow me? Any of y'all know what I'm talking about? Amen. God had told them a particular way that He wanted them to transport the Word of God. Amen. Instead, they got a Philistine cart and put the Ark of the Covenant on that cart. And y'all remember what happened. The oxen stumbled and Uzzah reached out to steady the Ark of the Covenant and God smote him dead. It scared David to death. You know for a while he wouldn't carry the ark anywhere. But later on he said, You're the chief of the fathers of the Levites. Sanctify yourselves, both ye and your brethren, that ye may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. He's talking to the Levites. Unto the place that I have prepared for it. Because you did it not at the first, the Lord our God made a breach upon us. For that, we sought him not after the due order. What David was saying was, our method was wrong. Right. They had the word of God, but they were transporting it in a way that God did not want them to do it. Now, I'm telling you, dearly beloved, as a church, we need to ask for God to show us how he wants us to do what we do. Mm -hmm. The method is important. What are the methods of a local church? Let me just give you a few. I'll just list them. One of them is the method of prayer. Amen. Amen. Anybody know that there was a time when churches, when they didn't have something, rather than try to figure out a way to finagle things to get it, they prayed. Amen. They prayed. And they asked God. They believed that God could give it to them. Amen. we got to get back to that. Amen. I'm not saying that you can't get help from somebody. But it'd be a real blessing if before we got on the phone and tried to get these people to help us and these people to help us and these people to help us, we knelt before God and we said, Oh God, behold their threatenings. And give us boldness that we might preach the Word of God. Amen. Supply what we need. They prayed. When they prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the Word of God with boldness. We need to get back to the method of prayer. I'll tell you another thing that I believe will help shake or shake up Jacksonville. That's the method of personal example. Amen. One of the best advertisements, and I'm not against tracks, I'm not against banners, I'm not against flyers, I'm not against radio. One of the best advertisements for Glenwood Baptist Church is members who live godly seven days a week out in the world in Jacksonville. Amen. I'm talking about the method of purity, the method of personal example. You've got a right to expect your preacher to live like a man of God seven days a week and not just up here in the pulpit. Amen. But this world is over debt and that is for us to not only give them the gospel but to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Amen. You have no right to live like you want to. You need to live in such a way that it affects this world. That it has an impact on unsaved people. Amen. Amen. There's the method, falsely, of preaching and personal soul winning. Instead of trying to figure out what kind of campaign can we do, let's go soul winning. Amen. And let's go try and win people to Jesus Christ. When they get here, let's preach them the truth. Amen. And I believe that the method is important. Yes, there's different ways to build a crowd. There are different ways to build a church. There are different ways to draw people. But I believe that these are the God-honored paths. The God-honored method. Pray. Live right. Use your opportunities for personal soul winning. Amen. Preach the Word of God when they come.
come here. One other method I think we need to not leave out is that is praise God when anything good happens. Amen. Amen. When anything good happens, don't, don't credit it. Don't give all the credit to some outside agency that helped us. Don't give all the credit to some great speaker that came in. But for sure don't give all the credit to the pastor or some individual. Give God the glory. Amen. Amen. Praise Him. That's some good old Baptist theology. Amen. We need to get back to the old past methods. Number two, I want to say let's ask not only for the methods of the old past, but let's ask for the message of the old past. Amen. I'm talking about preaching this book again. I remembered thy judgments of old, O Lord, the psalmist said, and have comforted myself. Horror hath taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. Mm -hmm. Psalm 119, 52 and 53. I read that and I thought, oh, that's how I feel. I remembered thy judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. You see, this book's still true. I don't care what the Supreme Court says about right and wrong. This book is still true. I don't care what the President says, the Congress says, the judges say, or the majority of people in your neighborhood or our town says, this book is true. And anybody who opposes it is wrong. We need to stick with this book. Hey, by the way, you know when I was talking about the book, I don't think we have any first-time visitors here. When I'm talking about the book, I'm talking about the King James 1611 Authorized Version Bible. Amen. Somebody says, oh, Pastor, you got a 1611? You couldn't even read it. You're a liar. You're a liar. I've got a 1611 reprint. I've read it through from cover to cover. I can read it. And this edition is an edition uh, uh, with modern fonts and spelling of the 1611 King James Bible. Right. It's not to be compared to the new King James Version or the new International Version or those others. Those are not editions of the King James Bible. They are revisions. Amen. This is not a revision. Amen. The typesetting may be a little bit different, but you've gotten used to that kind of stuff when you've looked at the difference and the way the letters are done in the Constitution of the United States or Declaration of Independence, you don't criticize those documents. That's right. Amen. I got a 1611 Amen. King James Bible Amen. right here in front of me. Amen. Amen. I'm not picking a fight. I'm just preventing Amen. you from trying to start one. You're not going to lie. Amen. I believe this is the providential message. I believe God Amen. gave it to me. Yes, sir. I believe God gave it to you. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Bible says, 2 Timothy 3.16. I believe it's not only providential, I believe it's preserved. God's promised in Psalm 12, 6 and 7 to preserve His Word. I believe we got a copy of it. Amen. I'm not changing. If you're waiting for me to come to church with the good news from modern man, you might as well just hold your breath. Amen. Unless you think that uh, <coughs> I'm going to do something other than make fun of it, because I'm going to show you what's wrong with it. Amen. You mark her down. If you see me with a stack of Bibles here, there's a good chance they're going to end up in the bad history. Because I'm going to show you what's wrong with them. And I'm going to get, you, you've probably seen me do it. I've done it in Georgia. I've done, I'll do it here. It's the proven message. It's the pure message. It's a powerful message. It's a piercing message. It's a plain message. Amen. We need to just get back old plain preaching. Let's ask for not only the methods and the message, but let's ask. Let's ask for the old paths. Number three, let's ask for the morals of the old paths. We need to shape our morals according to what God has said in His Word. He's the one that knows what's right and wrong. Proverbs, the Bible says in chapter 23, verse 26, My son, give me thine heart, and let thine eyes observe my ways. The old paths are God's paths. And I'm talking about being clean. We need to get back to just being clean. Do you know one of the things that brought down God's judgment in the flood was everybody was thinking wrong. Amen. They were not only doing wrong. Everybody, their idle thoughts, their imaginations were vile. Think about your own thoughts, dearly beloved. Mm -hmm. Where you do your worst probably is in your thinking. Mm -hmm. God wants you and me to think clean. Amen. Amen, Amen, brother. I believe that. Amen, brother. The Bible says before the flood hit that every imagination of the thoughts of the heart was only evil continually. 
Amen. Y'all recognize that? Am I still in the Bible somewhere? You know, I don't know where it is. Revelation or Genesis. But you remember it's in there. Yeah, it's in the book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 6. Every imagination of the thoughts of the heart was only evil continually. We need to get back to clean thinking. Amen. We need to get back to clean talking. Amen. Amen. Cuss words should never come out of a believer's mouth. I don't care if you're telling the best joke you ever heard, you ought to leave out that filthy language. I don't care if you're quoting what some other found out person said. It ought not to come out of your mouth. God's people ought to talk clean. And if you don't talk clean, it's because you don't think clean. Somebody says, Preacher, I'm sorry for the language that slipped out. You know why it slipped out? It's because you've been harboring it in your heart, thinking filthy. Thinking those filthy words. You ought not to think cuss words. Amen. 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 Clean thinking, clean talking will give you a clean testimony. Because you think long enough and you talk long enough the right way, you'll start living the right way. And our behavior ought to be right. <coughs> Number four, I'd like to ask for the marriages of the old paths. Amen. We got some people in our church that I love them for nothing more than they've stayed married for a long time. That's right. They want anything else about them. Tommy Davis, I don't know about hardly anything else I like about you, but you stayed married to Faith for a long time. God bless you. Ron, you, you may be a cantankerous person to be around, but your wife thinks you're wonderful for over 60 years. That's just a couple of people we got in our church, families, couples that I can think of right off the bat, that have over 60 years have said, this is the way that we believe it. You say, I do, and you do it. You say, I will, and you will. And you stick with one another. we got some other people who have been married here a good long time. God bless you. That's the way I believe it. That's the old way. Mm -hmm. We need to ask for marriages of the old past. Amen. Marriage is honorable in all. Mm -hmm. right. And the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. God's way of marriage is you court or date, then you covenant, then you consummate the marriage, then you have children. That's right. That's right. Do you get that order? Yes. Amen. God's way is you date first. You say, will you? You don't say, will you move in with me? Not God's way. You say, will you marry? Amen. Then you get Amen. married. Then you move in. Then you have sex. Then you have children. And then you stick with each other, watching each other get wrinkled. <laughs> Propping one another up with your arthritis. Amen. Putting up with one another's mental defects that develop over the years. Amen. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you're not old enough. <laughs> if you get older, you'll recognize some of those things and, and you'll say, I wish a preacher was going to something else and quit talking just about me. Amen. <laughs> that was the way the old marriages went. Their requirements was you don't get married unless you did it the right way. You did it the wrong way, we had what we called a shotgun wedding. <laughs> Amen. You wasn't allowed to just live together without getting married. I know some of y'all have done it wrong, but you're trying to do right now, and it does and I'm not trying to get on to you who've done it wrong in the past. I'm just telling you, God's way is that way. <laughs> That's God's way, period. The roles are the man is to be the head and the woman is to be the helper. That's God's way. I don't care what the changing culture says. That's God's way. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. That's the way it is. It's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Deal with it. The marriages of the old paths and their raising of children. We need to go back to the Bible way. It's scary to think about that the adults that are coming up are kids without a clue. Mm -hmm. It is scary. They don't have a clue about our country. They don't have a clue about what's made us great. They don't have a clue about God. And 
some of them are going to be running the country before you know it. God have mercy on us. A few more, I'll just list them for you. Let's ask for the music of the old paths. Let's ask for the music of the old paths. Even in independent Baptist churches, I've watched music go down the drain. And Bible-believing churches, I've seen, if it's not rock music, it's become country western dance music. But it's still dance music all the same. I won't illustrate it for you because I'll get too light and funny. And I don't want to laugh right now. I want to be mean. But let's ask for the music of the old past. Thank God for people who get up here and sing from the heart. Sinner Jesus will receive. Sound this word of grace to all. <coughs> Through the heavenly path we lead. All who linger. All who fall. Christ receiveth sinful men. <laughs> A country western southern gospel song was going through my mind in preparing this message. And in the song it was saying that they longed to hear Amazing Grace and the old, old story. And it'd be a blessing to see God's people get back to old hymns Amen. and not sing so that they feel good in their body and want to dance, but sing to praise God and broadcast truth. Dear beloved, we need to choose some holy music. The Bible says, For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Psalm 137, verses 3 and 4 says, And people uh, following Rick Warren and the Purpose Driven Bunch uh, are doing their best to try to get their music just as worldly as they can, and it's even in independent Baptist churches, in an effort to draw people to church. Dearly beloved, music ought not to be to try to entice worldly people with worldly music. Yeah. Well, God's music ought to be for God primarily. Amen. We need to choose holy music, helpful music, heavenly music. That doesn't mean that it has to be what many people would think of as, as funeral music. Doesn't mean that it has to drag. I don't believe that the problem is, is the tempo. I believe the problem with most music is the beat. It's got a dance beat to it. I'm not for necessary, especially in church services, I'm not for singing uh, songs where everything drags and drags and drags. And the problem with modern music is not that it's peppy and fast and strong. The problem is the beat that you put behind it. Let's ask for the music of the old past. The old rugged cross is still good. Amen. Saved by the blood of the crucified one, still good. Amen. Victory in Jesus is still good. Amen. Amazing grace is still good. Amen. And Calvary <coughs> is still good. Amen. When we all get to heaven, it's still good. Amen. Christ receiving Amen. sinful men Amen. is still good. Let's ask for the music of the old past. <coughs> Hold on to your wallet. Let's ask for the money practices of the old past. Let's ask for the money practices of the old past. I'd like to encourage me, you, as a church, as individuals, to practice with money what God wants us to do with our money. Amen. Now, most preachers, when they say that, you know there's one thing that's going to come out, that is tithes and offerings. <laughs> but I've got more in mind than you giving tithes and offerings. And by the way, uh, I give tithes and offerings. My wife and I give tithes and offerings. We, we decided on that when we got married. We were not going to ever come hell or high water. Whatever happened, we were not going to rob God of tithes and offerings. Amen. 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 Hope you believe that. Amen. Hope you believe that about yourself. Not necessarily about me. I hope you believe that. And by the way, not all preachers tithe. <laughs> Some preachers have got it figured out in their mind that they can't afford to tithe. After all, my whole life is a tithe, some preachers say. <laughs> Baloney. God wants all of us to learn to trust Him Amen. with our income. No matter what your income is. 
If you can't tithe off of your income now, you probably will not tithe if your income is one and a half times this in six months from now. That's right. You probably won't because there will always be something coming up. But that's not what I've got in mind. So I'm not even going to talk about tithe. Don't want you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> but here's what I'd like to encourage us to do about money and train our children and grandchildren to do this. Is before you spend the money, you earn the money. Amen. I'm going to give you, here's the, here's the lesson that people need to learn. And with 3S tonic. Here's, here's Brother O'Neill's 3S tonic for money. <coughs> Number one, sweat. Where do you get that from, preacher? I get that from the curse placed on Adam. He said, if you're going to have bread, you got to sweat first. Number one, you know what I mean by that? Work! Yeah, don't expect to have something if you hadn't worked. People want what mom and daddy got or grandpa and grandma got after they worked 20, 40 years or more. And, they, and after they worked, then finally they got some of those things. Some of y'all think that mom and dad got those things when they were 20. Listen, you mark her down. Somebody gets all those things when they're 20, they already been picked up by the time they're 25. You know what I'm talking about? Because they couldn't pay for it. And so somebody came and took everything that they had. Here's the three S's. Number one, sweat. Before you get it. Number two, save. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Number three, spend. Don't do it in a different order. Sweat, that is, earn it. Then, you save some of it. Don't spend everything that you got. Here's a verse I want you to memorize. Write this, write this verse down. Write down the reference. Proverbs 21, 20. Proverbs 21, 20. There may come times where it's hard for you to practice this. All of us have ups and downs. But Proverbs 21, 20 says this. There is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise. But a foolish man spendeth it up. Now you need to take that verse in mind when somebody tells you that because Jesus said don't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth and tells you that because of that you're supposed to give every dime in your bank account to missions. Or give every dime in your bank account toward uh, the church building program fund. The Bible says that you're a fool if you spend it up. I don't believe that is contradicting the rest of the Bible. You ought to give tithes and offerings. But you don't spend up what's left. <laughs> Not unless you're a fool, preacher. Because the Bible says a fool spendeth it up. That means you hang on to some of it. I don't understand how that check could have bounced. I got more checks in the checkbook. <laughs> Sweat, save, and then spend. <coughs> Buy it after you got the money for it. Mm -hmm. Then last, let's ask, all the people, God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's ask for the mission of the old past. Amen. What is that? It's not to get people elected in the office. <coughs> It's not to change the legislation of Jacksonville. The mission of the church is what's called the Great Commission. Where Jesus said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18, 19, and 20. That's the mission we need to get back to. I think you ought to pray about laws. I'm not saying as a citizen you can't get involved. But I'm just saying as a church, our mission is not to try to get people elected into office. As a church, our mission is not trying to affect legislation. As a church, our mission is to get people saved. Amen. As individuals, you want to be a good Christian citizen and do what you can. That's a great commission. Some people have worded it this way. And I'll give you this and we'll 
have an invitation. They've taken the Great Commission and give you, made it three W's. And that is win people, wet them, and work them. <laughs> that is, you teach them how to be saved. Then you baptize them. Amen. Then you teach them God's commandments. Amen. Teach them what to do. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations. That's winning them. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. That's weapon. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. That's working them. You put them to work to do what God wants them to do. I'd like to encourage every last one of us to not go the way of the world. Amen. I'd like to encourage you as an individual, don't go, don't go the way of the world. Don't think the way of the world. Don't talk the way of the world. Don't look the way of the world. You do all of the things that you do like you believe that God, you don't have to please me, believe what God would have you to do and then do it. Yeah. I don't do what I do to try to impress you, to try to impress another preacher, to mm -hmm. try to impress a, a denomination. I do what I do. I dress as I dress. I talk as I talk to try to be what God wants me to be. Here in this point of my life, in this location, in this time. And I'm not alone. You should do the same. Amen. You don't have to be a preacher. Right. You just need to do what God wants you to do. And God's way is the old paths. Let's stand together, heads back.